hello everyone, this is Sage and I welcome you to our Executive Corner, the Expert Talks by Calkine TV and today we're very lucky to have Mr. Brian Miller who is the CEO of K2Fly and we bring you the industry leaders, the successful business owners and the equity and market advocates all under the one roof to help you discover the insights of the stock market and help you to understand how you can earn multiple passive income streams. So today's show has Mr. Brian Miller, the CEO of K2Fly. And to give you some interesting background about the company, K2Fly, the name is derived from the name of the world's second largest mountain, which some would call the most challenging to climb in the world. And it is their company pursuit to help companies navigate challenges faced with the ESG through their enterprise SAAS product. So welcome, Brian. Thank you for joining us from sunny Perth. Earth WA, I believe. Yeah, that's correct, Sage. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Well, with your wealth of knowledge from the IT industry, I'm sure the viewers are keen to hear your insights. So let's get started. Um, firstly, congratulations on winning the first contract of full mining technical assurance suite from Roy Hill. Can you please shed some light on this milestone? Yeah, thanks, Sage. Uh, so, yeah, we did an ASX announcement last week, uh, which explained that we'd won a our biggest ever deal with Roy Hill. It's for a five year deal coming in there just under two and a half million dollars. It's a software as a service deal. So in effect, they're renting the software uh, and it's to do with a Sativa acquisition that we made a few months ago at the end of 2020. Sativa was a, a really good tech firm, which we were able to acquire. And they have some presence already in Roy Hill, a public size mm -hmm. presence, but with some investment into their product and with some mm -hmm. presenting of their product in, in various ways, we've managed to convince the leadership in Roy Hill that this is a long-term program. Uh, it's got good stickiness about it, which means it'll be there all that time. Uh, and I, I believe, without sharing confidences, um, the Roy Hill are very happy with what they have acquired and what they see the outcome as being over time. Obviously, it, it takes a few months to implement these systems, but I think there are some very exciting developments going to happen around Roy Hill. And clearly, we're very keen on partnering uh, with a firm who has such a fantastic reputation. So we're very happy with it. Excellent news. Thank you for shedding a little bit more light on that subject. And the company is in recent uh, release said that the demand for mining technical assurance suite is growing across the tier one miners globally. Is this a reflection of the buoyant commodity market or is there more to it in your opinion? Yeah, it's a bit of both, Sage, good question. Uh, so there's no doubt that because the iron ore prices in particular are pretty buoyant, gold would be another one. Those firms are taking the opportunity to invest in technology as ever people are interested in almost having um if, if they could if they could wave a magic wand they would like to have uh, mines where there are fewer and fewer human beings out there working for all sorts of reasons not least of which would be health and safety but also the economics of the situation so there is something of that going on those big companies who are having a very good period at the moment do have some cash to free up to make those investments but I think it is also around this general area of ESG that you pointed out, environment, social and governance, where almost everybody is now on their A game in terms of saying, hey, we've got to do even better here. And there are some resources firms who've done a fabulous job in the last few years in improving that. But I think this technical assurance is coming to the fore. So I think it's the, the dual situation of, yes, there is some money around at the moment to make investments. But there also is that acknowledgement that the, the obligations and the requirements you know, can be dealt with at this particular time. So lucky for us, lucky for K2 Fly, really. Absolutely. Complying with the government's ESG requirements is so important. And if you're streamlining that and helping companies to achieve that without any delays, you can only see benefits for all involved. Absolutely. So how is the growing focus towards meeting ESG commitments across organisations in general and resource companies in particular advantageous for K2Fly, please? Yeah, I, th I think if, you, if you're looking at, say, the Australian press, at the Australian Financial Review or, or The Australian or the Sydney Morning Herald, when you look at pretty much on a daily basis now, there is a story in there around the ESG space, uh, around bio 
um, security, around biodiversity, around looking after the planet, about doing you know, generally good things. So I think it's it is now front of mind. There have been some pretty high profile examples where investors such as various pension funds or sovereign funds from around the world have withdrawn investments in some pretty big firms, pretty big mining firms, because they weren't satisfied with what was going on. So that, that, that's a warning shot to people. And I think it's just acknowledged now that um, as far as everyone's concerned in the resources game, um, there is a reputation, which is sometimes pretty unfairly placed on them, um, but there is a reputation out there. And most of these organisations now are, are clearly acknowledged that they're going to do better. Some of them are doing a pretty good job anyway, but they're going to do it even better. So there are things like the ICMM, the uh, International Council of Mining and uh, Metals, uh, who have recently come out with some new suggestions and that will become a standard in relation to how mining firms deal with tailings and dams. There have been one or two disasters where people have lost lives. Um, it is a huge, clearly huge issue in terms of the social responsibility, the social license to operate. So ICMM, who, which is made up of some of the biggest miners in the world, they're now kind of setting the standard and saying, hey guys, we've got to meet this, at least meet this standard. And that's very good because that in that suggests that those type of clients need people like K2 Fly, who have so-called commercial off-the-shelf or COTS solutions. And the COTS solutions are the fastest way to implement those new standards and to deliver uh, the outcomes, which not only do the investors want, which is really important, but also, should we say, their neighbours want, you know, people in the vicinity of these uh, resource facilities are pretty keen on making sure that's all being done to a really good standard. Absolutely. I can see how the current climate would be K2 Flyers products in demand at the moment. And a, a case comes to mind, the Shell Oil Company has just been held up by a court in The Hague for not complying to the Paris Climate Agreement, I believe. So you got it in one. Exactly. That's And that's the sort of high profile event or story i mean there is a little bit in terms of you know, the act sometimes there's a difference between the truth and the messaging and something you know, there is a little bit of a gray area there but it's absolutely front of mind for people at the, working at the c-suite in these big organizations or the non-executive directors thinking wow we've got to be really good at this we've got to be able to prove that we're doing the right thing um, and that that's not always easy no, not at all. However, congratulations as well on the news about Fortescue Metals Group uh, extending their contract for the Infoscope land management software. Yeah. Uh, and uh, please, so, Alyssa. So, yeah, in relation to that one, just as, as sorry to interrupt this age, but um, Infoscope um, has been in uh, FMG now for several years. It, mm. it, it was the anchor client. Uh, what's happened here, what the, the story behind the story, is that FMG have now taken that solution to some of their South American assets and the European assets. So they, it's a further sort of vindication, I guess, that our solution, our Cox solution, as I said, um, is fit for purpose. And they're now rolling it out to any um, such assets they have, all bodies they have around the world. We have some other clients who use the same solution, um, for instance, and they will be taking our software from little old Perth to all around the world um, and using it because it's, it's a proven technology. Fantastic news. So please elucidate on the pipeline of projects for the calendar year 2021. Yeah, it's uh, clearly we, we have to be mindful of, of ASX rules and regulations. I'm not here to be right. making forecasts or anything. But people who would have followed our press releases in recent months would have seen we're involved in some paid pilot studies and the idea of a paid pilot study, you would assume, is that the client will ultimately say, yeah, this has worked. So they will take it on to be a full software as a service contract. So people who've seen the announcements would know that we're doing a paid pilot study in Vale, which seems to be going well. We're doing a paid pilot study in BHP, for instance, that seems to be going well. And there are one or two others. So clearly part of the idea of doing a paid pilot study is you want to convert them to be full on clients. And that's really where the focus is. We have an idea 
that working in the top end of town, we would call that tier one and tier two miners, we've got about 10 or 11 individual solutions which all play into this ESG space. And the idea is to get in there, do a good job, be seen as someone who's credible, who delivers, and then obviously try to expand our role by possibly selling another one of those solutions or a different module within a solution. And as you expand and you, you, you seem to do a good job, then hopefully you get to be seen as a trusted partner by tier one and tier two miners. And it's almost as if they come to you first then and say, hey, guys, have you got a solution that would help here and so on and so forth. And, and using that Roy Hill example, we talked about at the very outset. Yes was already something being done in Roy Hill. So that was good. That proved a point that these guys know what they're talking about. So then you had an opportunity then to sell, as I said, our biggest ever contract to date with some more uh, of that solution, the comprehensive suite. And that's kind of a good vote of confidence because people then know that you can be trusted to deliver, which in the IT industry um, sometimes can be hard to find. So mm. pretty happy with that search. Excellent. Well, thank you for your insights. And uh, I believe the growth strategy has been working quite well, as you mentioned, with the Sativa uh, extension there. And um, Decipher as well was another acquisition that you um, had earlier in the year or perhaps last year. So this year has been remarkable for K2Fly in terms of acquisitions and adding new clients. How is integration going so far? If you could elaborate on that. Yeah, good question, Sage. It is always tricky. So we took um, Sativa came under our wing at the end of uh, 2020. Uh, Decipher was more recent, uh, February 2021. Right. And what you do is you're bringing in teams of people, it might be 10 or 12 colleagues. Um, they have been used to working with another company. Um, so that's, you know, that's fine, that's true. And then we have to uh, integrate as quickly as we can. And we have a, a process called One K2 Fly, which is about getting people to work in the same way and all understanding what they're doing. But the fabulous thing about doing those acquisitions is not alone do they have technology, which is really good, that's fantastic. They have a presence because they already have some clients. Often they're the same clients that we already had, but sometimes they're slightly different. But what you bring is a lot of talented individuals with you, typically with a subject matter experts or technical expertise. You bring those in and you gradually build up the capability within K2 Fly which then it becomes a virtuous circle, which then allows you to come up with new and better offerings, better offerings that will allow you then to win more working clients, yeah. recruit more staff and, and so on and so forth. But it is interesting, so the folks in Sativa came from a relatively small company, let's say 10 employees. They also had some offshore capability. They used some software developers who were offshore. But then Decipher, by comparison, were part of the West Farmers Group. The West Farmers is a huge uh, company in Australia. So they were part of a team within a massive company. And obviously then to come and join KG Fly would, would be quite different. But we work pretty hard in terms of integrating people and making sure they understand that there is the K2 Fly way. Um, and so far, Sage, pretty good, pretty happy with that. Fantastic. Now, this question might be doubling up on what you've just mentioned, but if there's anything more you'd like to add, how do you see the recent acquisitions of Sativa and Decipher opening new doors and opportunities for the company? Yeah, well, I mean, let's, let's stick with Decipher just as a, okay. for instance. So Decipher uh, was a unit within West Farmers and West Farmers or the, the organisation had invested quite heavily in developing a product which is Decipher for mining. So that, that's what it was, Decipher for resources. So somebody else had already invested that money, which is fantastic. We then had to buy them, obviously. That, that's, that's a fair trade, that's how it works. But they are real specialists in this tailings and dam space, which has, I would say in the last 18 months, has, has grown and has gone up the escalator to, to almost be the number one issue uh, for miners in this ESG space. People are very concerned about it. And certainly people like the Church of England Pension Fund, who withdrew money from a couple of mining firms last year, did so because they didn't like the strategy. They didn't like the systems that those organizations had in place to be able to confirm that things would be good and safe and proper and appropriate. So by taking something like the Decipher offering, 
and then trying to deploy that across our clients. We've got some 20 odd clients. We've got a lot of interest. Um, uh, and I think hopefully in the not too distant future, there'll be some good announcements coming out as to how some other people are looking at that decipher solution and saying, wow, that's really good stuff. It starts at map first. It's very geographical and it goes into the solution of that. Uh, it looks fantastic. It's got a really good track record. We've already made some sales since we acquired them in February. Evolution Mining would be an example. We're doing this paid pilot in BHP, but they already had clients such as Rio and South 32 and other organizations. So by taking on those new solutions, possibly investing a little bit more in them to slightly tweak them, slightly uh, improve them, uh, you then find yourself in a very good position to mm. sell those solutions into your existing clients and indeed come up with new prospective clients. So yeah, pretty pleased with that, Sage. Absolutely. Well, as the economy scales to be more green conscious and in the commodity super cycle that we're in, I think the sky could be the limit for K2 mm. flight at the moment. <laughs> so what are the company's key areas of focus in 2021, please? Yeah, it's a good point. So, well, clearly the financial year 2021 is, is going to finish in the next three or four weeks. For the 21-22 year, um, yeah, it's very much about growth. Um, we believe because of various pieces of legislation around the world, including that ICNM I mentioned, but also the New York Stock Exchange, some changing some of its rules in terms of the level of detail it wants to go into, and other various things that are happening at, at that macro level. Uh, the requirement for solutions uh, created to cope with specific situations has never been greater. We will be increasing our number of business development people. We will be increasing our focus, uh, just not just within Australia. This is in North America, South America, Europe and Asia. Uh, and at the same time, um, we will always be on the look for appropriate acquisitions. We will be looking out to see if there's something adjacent to what we do. You'll never see K2 Fly going off and buying um, some retail banking software or something like that, but that's not our space. It's typically gonna be in the asset intensive arenas around resources, and it will be very much playing on ESG and being able to work with everybody uh, to ensure there's better sustainability and transparency at the same time, which is, which is a really good space for us. Absolutely. So we have to wind up now. It would be great to talk more about your projects, but would it be possible for you to clear something up for me before we finish up? I sometimes get confused in your ASX announcements when you talk about ARR and TCV invoices raised and turnover. What do you track as the key indicators and why, please? Yeah, no, it's a good point, Sage. And it is a bit different in the tech space, as, as some of your listeners and viewers would be aware, um, accounting standards change from time to time. So some people move some of the goalposts on us. So what we'd like to do, hopefully so that people understand what we're looking at, we call ARR or annual recurring revenue. That's the total uh, dollar value we can charge for our software as a service license fees. So we're up above 3 million now. We obviously hope that to go to four, five, six, whatever in the future. So that that's a figure which you kind of know if you did no other new business for a given year, that's the absolute minimum that will come minimum that will come through the door. That's the ARR. So as an example, let's say we're on approximately three and a half million dollars as an ARR at the moment. Probably our wages bill in K2Fly is probably around four million, maybe four and a half million dollars a year. So it doesn't quite cover it. So but you kind of know that you know, if you didn't do any new business you mainly got that covered through the ARR. So that's that's a really good number. And to us, I could be that's our most important number as a software, as a service number. TCV stands for total contract value. So as with that Roy Hill announcement recently, that was a five year deal. So you multiply five against that software value that I was talking about, five times the ARR. Plus there's also some implementation effort where you have some consultancy so it wouldn't just be five times the dollar value of the license. It might also be another 100K or 200K added because you have to implement or configure the system. 
So we're very keen on looking at ARR and TCV, and typically our TCV number will be three or four times greater than our ARR. But as anyone who follows the accounting standards know, really, at the end of the financial year, you have to report on the revenues. And the revenues based upon the new accounting procedures will be the amount of money you can say, yes, we, we have earned in this given year. And then slightly different from that uh, is a figure which is to do with invoices raised, which in the old days, invoices raised probably did equal revenue. It's slightly different now because we've just raised an invoice as per the ASX announcement to Roy Hill for you know, some software, but it's all to do with how much of that can actually be recognized in this calendar year, as opposed to the next calendar year. So it does get a bit confusing, but in terms of what we're concentrating on all the time, it's that annual recurring revenue figure, which is the software licenses we have, because our software is very sticky and it stays in that client for a long time, that's a good sign that we know we're heading in the right direction. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up for me. <laughs> Appreciate uh, thanks, that. Thanks, Dave. Very good. Very happy. I, you, be, you wouldn't be surprised. The number of phone calls I get from people <laughs> saying, is your ARR the same as your revenue? I'm saying, well, no, not really. It's different. But, that, but no, you're not alone, Sage. You're not alone. Okay. Well, appreciate your time today, Brian. Again, as usual, a fabulous interview with Brian. Thank you for sharing your insights. Was there any final comments you'd like to share with the audience here at Calcrain? No, I think my, my main point would be um, clearly we're in the tech space and some people do like tech, some people don't like tech, that's, that's totally fine. The difference I would suggest is because we are this software as a service form of tech, we are selling recurring revenues into tier one and tier two mining companies. So if you, it's almost like if you want to have a bet each way, you're in the tech space, but because of SaaS, it's not that risky, it already exists but you're also playing in the mining game. So those people who are servicing the mining and resources clients, I would suggest are in a very good spot. Great, well, thank you again for your valuable insights, Brian. No and problem. that was a fabulous show with Mr. Brian Miller, the CEO of K2 Fly. And please head to their website for any further information. And as we say here at Calcine, stay apprised and invest wise. Thank you.